What you're looking at right now is an old photograph postcard of a town and powder mill that used to exist in this area. Although it's been gone for a long time, there's still something here today. Pay close attention to that object that I'm zooming in on right now. As I fade to present time, that object is still here today, right there in the middle of the screen, which means we're looking in the same area of where that town and mill used to exist. On top of that, I'm taking this footage from the same location that photograph was taken, right here on top of the train tunnel. Now, although the landscape has significantly changed, there's still some things hiding back there today. So you're invited to come along with me to see what kind of history we can find hiding along that river. So what you're looking at is where we started today's video, right up on top of there. That's the same exact location that photograph postcard was taken back in the 1800s. And it may not be coming through on camera, but currently there's like a, a mist or a fog coming out of that tunnel. That's because it's significantly cooler inside than it is out here. And it's just kind of creeping its way out, making for a nice effect. Further down the line now, we're now at the structure that I showed you both in the photograph and present day staying on top of the tunnel. And this just appears to be a little concrete shack, which appears to resemble like a mini mausoleum. There is nothing inside of it. It is just empty, but it's been here from at least, we believe the 1800s, according to that old photograph. Also joining me today is RJ78 Productions and Exploring with the Coal Cracker. Now RJ and myself did stumble upon this area earlier this year. We were scouting locations for the Iron Horse Rambles. And we found some things hiding back here. And when we talked to Chris about it, Chris was like, yep, yeah, I know what that is. So anything I do share as far as photographs and other things are going to be courtesy of him because he was able to send them to us to share with you guys. It's a pretty neat tree here. And we're going to use it to cross through. And just past these nature, nature's carpet logs looks to be uh, almost like a little canal here. And it's ending right here, and it appears to be like a little roadway that goes over it. And another opening on the other side here, which I believe this would connect down to the river. But up ahead where we're going, where Chris is, is where we're going to find some of the ruins. There's actually some foundations and other things hiding back here. So you can probably hear the water. And down along the water's edges, we're going to find most of our remaining items, including some retaining walls, foundations, and some other things located up here. We're going to head in this direction first, and then kind of backtrack this way. So for reference, what we're looking at right now is the other side of that little canal, which is right over there. And there's a lot of rubble, uh, some brick walls, some coal. But then we come over here, and we do have some ruins. Now what I'll show for reference again is the area that we're at right now and it appears to be remnants of a dam. They had dams here to control the water for their various, you know, production things here or for the town itself. But we may be looking at different parts of the dam itself and then some building foundations, which if we do follow this, it would go clear across to the other side where there is another wall over there. We're going to get over there later and check it out. but. Both sides of the river, there are man-made things still hiding today, including retaining walls, foundations, and some various random objects. So aside from the photographs, I was able to obtain some information on a website which does pertain to this area. So I'm going to read that off to you now. I'll also link that site down below in the description if you want to read along with yourself or to find out information on other mills here in the area. It says, Henry A. Weldy was a known manufacturer of black powder in the lower anthracite region. At about 1880, he put up a small dynamite factory near hometown. The output of the plant was about 4,000 pounds of grades, of all grades, a day, which is equivalent to two tons a day, all of which was just sold to the coal mines of Schuylkill County. At about 1900, Weldy employed John M. Newman as superintendent. In 1903, the business, which had always been carried on separately from black powder mills, was incorporated as the Weldy Dynamite Company of Pennsylvania and shortly thereafter was sold to the DuPont Company, 
which had a controlling interest in Welly's black powder mills for many years. In 1904, the company was dissolved, and in 1906, the plant was abandoned, as it was too small to not properly, as it was too small and not properly equipped to compete with other more modern plants. Here we have another structure of sorts. There's a stacked wall and there's some anchors coming out of the top of it. It's about six feet tall, maybe six feet long, maybe three to four feet thick, but there's definitely some anchor bolter rods coming out of it. Maybe something was on top of it. Could have been an abutment for a bridge here, possibly. And there's actually a tree growing out of the top of it. Ugh, spider webs. Here's the back side of it. And there's the tree. I've always said nature never ceases to impress me. That's been growing there for a long time. And I heard Chris just say that he thinks that a bridge was here. So I think that we were right that this was an abutment for a bridge. So probably came out level here with the ground. There's a little bit of an embankment here. Came across, across the river. And then we'll see what the other side looks like a little bit later. Hey everyone, sorry to interrupt the video. I just wanted to jump in here to remind you guys that coming up shortly on Sunday, September 18th, is my ride along meetup event on the Ironton Rail Trail. If you're interested in attending, check my community post and my pin post on my Facebook page for all the details. Back to the video. As we're walking through here too, just try to envision what this used to look like compared to back in the 1800s to what it looks like now. But you can imagine though the beauty of living down here. You have access to the railroad, you have access to a water source, and you're surrounded by mountains and trees, although where we're walking right now was completely open. Nature has reclaimed. Oh, I just found something else too. So there are definitely little hidden things all about here. And we're not even on the other side yet, which holds a whole lot more. But let me show you what I just found. It's nothing significant, but it is worth documenting. And I can actually show you some more things as well. Um, yeah, so right over here, I just happened to notice out of the side of my eye, some more anchor bolts here. And what it looks like is one, two, three, four different little foundations here with anchor bolts coming out of them. So it doesn't make you wonder what was this used for or what was it? Something was definitely held in place here. Maybe another type of a bridge, who knows? So we're looking back right where those four posts were with the anchor rods. And now you can see there's like a, a berm line here. And that's because here's the canal. So the canal goes along and you got this berm or this ridge line on the side of it here, which they could have used horses or mules back in the day to pull maybe small boats or barges down it. It also kind of resembles like a, maybe a small narrow gauge rail line as well, but that's just speculation. But yeah, you could definitely see the impression here of the canal. There is a, through the branches, I do see another stack stone wall and the rail line is just up there continuing to walk along this ridge line towpath whatever you want to call it just goes in a completely straight line here and there is the canal off to our left although nature has reclaimed you could still see you know clear evidence of what used to be here, which I find pretty fascinating.
coming upon a lot of spider webs too. Try not to disturb their nests, but we keep walking right into them inadvertently. I guess there's something down here that they spotted. We'll go check it out now. Just past this big fallen tree, there actually is something over there. It looks like almost remnants of another bridge. It has the same shape and design as the other one. But let's get a closer look and see if we can confirm that. So RJ did spot this one and he thinks as well that this was another bridge here almost identical to the one we found and if we look across which again we'll show when we get over there there's a lot of walls and foundations as well that would line up with these objects <laughs> roughly about 25 yards from that foundation we just showed you which we think is a bridge we did spot well chris spotted it what appears to be another possible bridge and this resembles the one i found earlier with those four posts it's four separate posts with these anchor bolts coming out and just show you know, scale of size here. So, looks like they had a multitude of bridges going across. Our little turtle friend is just hanging out here in nature, doing his thing. Got a nice environment here. Living amongst the ruins. And we're still searching, still finding many more things. So, it just goes to show that you never know what you may find, whether it's along rail lines, rivers, or just simply walking in the woods. Little did we know we stumbled upon an old town and powder mill facility. All right, I'm going to uh, keep searching around. We'll see if we find any more, more major finds rather than these little tiny anchor rods and foundations. If we do, I'll definitely show it, with, show it to you, share it with you. If not, we'll be heading across the river, hopefully, and show you what's over there because there's a lot more over there, I think, than there is w right here on this side. Oh, currently standing in the middle of the river. What? 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 Huh? huh? So we basically just came down this whole area here and we weren't really finding much more. So I decided to come out into the river and walk back towards the direction we started from because Along the left-hand side here, we're gonna see numerous walls and the other sides of the bridges and maybe even more than that, maybe remnants of the dam. It is kind of thickly covered right now. I'm not sure if these are rhododendrons or mountain laurels. I always confuse those, but I know further up there will be a clearing. So once I do get to the next set of visuals, we'll bring it right back. But for the meantime, I'm gonna stay but for the meantime, I'm going to stay silent and just give you uh, a few moments here of this peaceful, beautiful spot. Here's an example right here of some of the things we're gonna see. I'm gonna crop it in to show you. There's a tree coming out on top of a type of wall. And again, nature just grows and does its thing where it wants to, but yeah, that's definitely a man-made wall. A small one, but it is still here along the river's edge. Depending on where we're currently located, it may or may not be the other side of one of those small bridges. All right, made another discovery right here. Appears to be some type of tank that is rusted out and exposed right now. It's maybe four feet in length at the most. Maybe a foot, foot and a half in diameter as far as thickness. But looks like maybe an air tank possibly. But I could see, I know you guys won't be able to see. Through here though, there are just a lot of st stacked walls, stone walls. 
nothing significant, so I'm not going to bother going up there. But it does clear up farther that we go. The only tricky part I'm having right now is trying to find the shallowest water because there's a couple of areas that does get deep, and I do have other things in my pockets that I don't want to get wet. So I'm doing my best to navigate safely without getting in, ruining anything. But um, I do know up here it's going to be much clearer and we'll be able to see a lot more. There's a little island, dry, high area. See all the finely washed, smooth pebbles. Some bigger boulders here. And these ones look like they've they've fallen here from maybe up there. And here's my hand for scale, and it's covered in the gorgeous layer of carpet here. It's a big rock. All right, let me get up here because that's going to be our next location to check out. There's looking where we just were, and as I mentioned, here we go. A lot more to see here. Oh, and we hear a train. And I believe that is the RDCs for the weekend trip to Jim Thorpe. We're gonna not be able to see it, but at least hear it coming up. Those are rail diesel cars. I actually rode on those last October. Yep, there they are. Heading into the tunnel right now. All right, so back to the wall here. I'm gonna stand by it. At the base of it, you can see it is clearly taller than me, so. It's roughly a seven or eight foot wall. Looks like more of a retaining wall, but doesn't mean that there couldn't have been something on top at one time. Actually, I may have confirmed what it is. I think right in this vicinity is the other side of a bridge because directly behind you guys is one of the bridges we did show you. That's pretty neat. Look, at they have that really big stone there and they constructed it all around it and it looks perfect. Like. That takes some skill and some good craftsmanship to be able to do that. So here's a, a large stone kind of jetting out and the wall does continue, but somewhere around here was the other side of one of the bridges that we just pointed out, which is right there. So we're definitely seeing the other side and we're gonna see a lot more on our way up because we still have a, a long way to go to get back up there. It's completely covered in nature's carpet and it, as I said, jets out into the river. And there's another little island here. But I did spot something from this vantage point. Right there, there's a wall, kind of like this, going inwards. Pretty certain a building of sorts used to be there. It looks like a side wall or foundation of a building. I'm not sure if I could get up there, but at least if I could get close over there, I'll kind of reach up and show you. But I think that's one of the buildings that we've seen on the old images on the other side of the river. I think they made a mistake by staying on that side because it's kind of deep here and there's more to see over here. So I'm glad I stayed over here. But I'm gonna do my best to get right down here and show you what I can of that little area. So I made it to that little area. I'm gonna stick the camera up now and show you that that wall is there where I believe a structure did stand. I'm, uh, about 99% confident about that. 
but I can't get up there though to show you in more detail only from standing here along the wall and the other side here too is actually some rubbish uh, it looks like an old tire and some corrugated metal possibly a can laying here along the edge so yeah it's a, a neat area wish I could get up there but it's just too difficult from, from where I am looking back where we just were that's where that home site or building site used to be and I'm out here closer to the middle now and got some nice rapids and it's a bit deeper so I can't go any further and that's looking upstream I'm gonna keep traversing this left side and see what else there is to discover let me know what you think so far if you're enjoying the video and liking what we're able to share with you which is a part of 1800s history do one of two things or both feel free to pause the video comment down below let me know what you think so far and if you want you can also give the video a thumbs up it's free only takes a second and lets me know that you enjoy this type of content Gets a little deeper, but it's moving fast. But you got to keep your feet planted solid. I think you could do it here, possibly. I would maybe face forward and sidestep. Or you got to get yourself a, a pole for support. As Adam LaRue says, I'm documenting this for posterity. Come on, Chris. I probably try to avoid the rocks, they're real slippery. If you can maybe come to your right more. That's why it's good to do it with company in case anything was to happen. We're really here to try to help the best way we can. But if you ever do come alone, just know your limits and avoid things that could potentially hurt you or get you into some type of predicament. All right, I'm gonna to try to help him out and then once we get over here, we'll continue on. I'm having a tough time too, just navigating. There's these like pockets that get your feet wedged in between the rocks. I think he's gonna be okay. He's kind of in the middle calm part. Just needs to get over, but up ahead of it, it does get much calmer and quieter and easier to navigate. All right, RJ's making his way up. Chris is still trying to cross, but I stopped here and looked up and do you see what I see? Right there is a tank. Similar to the type we found earlier that was rusted out, but this one is intact. I'm going to get up here and uh, give you a better look at it. All right, I switched to my phone for this. Now, right there is a wall, and there's the tank. But I don't think that's anything old or original because, as we can see, there's actually tires all around it. So I think that was dumped, and it rolled down there. So that's unfortunate that people were just, you know, illegally dumping, so to speak. But that tank, though, I mean, that's just my thoughts. But it doesn't look all that old. It's not even rusted. But it is right there, though, along that wall. And the wall was built for some reason, which is also 
on top of this wall here. So you really can't tell what you're looking at. You can only kind of guesstimate based on images and how things look today. But regardless, it's something to point out and share with you guys. You guys know what this is, right? This is a rail tie. The strange thing is, it's all the way over here. The tracks are all the way over there. I'm wondering if this washed down from somewhere upstream. That's my guess. But behind it, there's two walls that are staggered. So we got the lower one, almost fell, lower one here, and another one higher up a few feet behind it. And uh, looks rather interesting over there. All right, so there's that other wall I said staggered. And uh, it goes in, and there is the other bridge abutment right behind Chris. You said there's a lot of bolts up there and stuff. I'm not going to go up there because I'm kind of good where I'm at now. But like I said, you go watch his video to see what the area looks like. So here looks like two supports here with anchor bolts coming out. And right there would be like the uh, rear portion of the bridge, like the anchor area. He did stay back there. There's like an opening, almost like an oven. So maybe, maybe that's not exactly the bridge. Maybe it uh, utilizes something else, but there's an opening there that goes in. Then we got this little wall right here. So initially I thought that was the other bridge abutment, which I'm not saying it's not. I think this is right here, but that may be a type of oven or kiln or something. Regardless, it's a fascinating area. It's amazing that all this is just hiding back here. Right, this is getting rather deep here. That's why it's so calm. I need to kind of get out of here because I'm getting almost up to my waist. It's beautiful here, but that is significantly deeper. And there's definitely more ruins up here. Yeah, so you can see a scale reference with Chris standing on top of it. Oh yeah, there's a neat area here. Let's go up there and check that out. I guess I'll bring you along too. Yeah, this is a good sized wall. Wow. It's probably at least 10 feet. And then we here we have a chunk that's broken off. You can see the big anchor rod coming through. This is that notch I was saying might have been part of the dam. Yeah. Yeah, that's what this resembles. standing right here kind of in a notch which we believe is the other side of the dam and it was um just like an artificial dam it wasn't concrete it was stone and logs that they used to dam up the water but it's a little cutaway here and it probably would have went like this across the way but this is the other side of it though and he's up there is the old road i guess it was like an access road or road into this part of the area but you can see the kind of flat level area up there where the road used to be this tree is pretty fascinating. I just want to share this with you. You can see there's roots growing into the wall, but then there's a really long root, which almost resembles another tree, growing straight down into the ground. That is amazing. And that's a healthy tree too. It's a, a white birch. It's not dead. That's surviving and thriving despite what man made here. Incredible. So we've kind of come full circle. Up here is where we crossed over next to the canal. We walked down here. That is where we believe is the dam ruins and some building ruins and the bridge abutments. And we walked all the way down. So we came up all the way that we needed to. Now I'm not certain if there's anything up here. I know there used to be obviously, 
but today not sure if anything still exists i'm going to talk to chris see if there is anything worth traversing up there for if not we're going to cross back over somewhere and just see if there is anything else um, that i haven't shared with you guys yet Oh boy. The Bojangles are a little cool right now, but I'm okay. Yes, yeah, so I got uh, about the jewels deep, but after that, it's not too bad. So I got to about jewels deep. That is a pretty gorgeous area though. Just coming around a sweeping curve. Another wall there, but that's pretty much it. Remnants of a wall and their old road up there. But they're uh, deciding how they're gonna come across. Documenting for posterity again. Let's see how he does. Nothing in your pockets, right? I'd come this way towards me if you could. I could see the bottom. I mean, you're gonna go up to a little bit over your knees, but I could see the bottom. What do you say? Something about along the bank. Ooh. Okay, you're good. Back on dry land, Chris is navigating back downstream trying to cross. That's the one problem with those muckers as they're great for many conditions, but when you have to go in deeper water, they automatically fill up with water. So he's trying to find a shallow crossing. But we are back where we started, so which means we pretty much documented everything we wanted to today and then some. And any information I was able to share with you hopefully did kind of tie the whole picture together, add those pieces to the puzzle. And I do want to thank Chris once again for sharing the information and knowledge that he did do, as well as Chris and RJ themselves for coming along because we did this together. Between the three of us, we were able to spot different things and also more importantly, look out for each other's safety. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask them down below. If you wanna see more adventures like this one, there will be a playlist. And of course, you'll find links to their channels as well. Thanks so much for watching everyone. And until next time, I'll see you in the next video. All right, have a little bit of bonus footage for you. Chris brought us further downstream. We actually drove down here and we're walking along the river's edge again and came upon something that looks like it's man-made or there's been man here because we have this rock with a drill hole. Right down there is a cable that's anchored down and where RJ is, this outcropping of rocks appears to have been maybe an old dam or a road because it actually comes out on both sides. So it looks like they were purposefully placed here and you can see where it kind of makes the, the water narrower. So whether it's a road or a dam or maybe there was a mill here at one time, anything's possible, but definitely this area was altered and there is some man-made items here, but I'm not sure if there is anything else, but just wanted to throw this in there because it is still part of the mill and town area we're just further downstream we were way up there maybe uh closer to half to three quarters of a mile 
anymore. Oh, I'm glad I was upstream of that one. Oh, so that was a soaker. It's so wet. Is it warm? It's cold. Oh, he's pissing ice cubes. 